Hii ni manje karis. Hello everyone. Welcome back to ASR. African Stories Realized. This is our first review of Red Ink Season 1, which recently started streaming on Showmax. The show is an A-pod thriller which tells the story of a journalist turned publicist who is approached by an imprisoned serial killer to tell his story. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Episode 1 opens up with a charming scene. A young lady who is about to catch a taxi caught the eye of a young man who managed to get her number just as the taxi she had boarded was driving away. The young man later called the lady who introduced herself as Busi. The young man introduced himself as Sipo and asked her out on a date, which she accepted. Sipo and Busi met up for dinner and got to know each other. Busi was really feeling him, but on the drive back home, Sipo took a detour through a secluded area. where his true colors were revealed with him violently killing the innocent Bushi. The show then makes a time jump 13 years into the present where we are introduced to Lucy, a former journalist turned publicist who is struggling with her husband's infidelity and still hasn't received the 40% equity in the PR company she's working for. She demanded the equity she was promised from her boss and friend Patricia, who continued to stall. Lucy also packed up her husband's things, kicking him out of the home they shared together. We are then introduced to Sipo in prison, who is revealed to be a serial killer named Napoleon Dingiswai. Detective Morapet, who had been the one to arrest Napoleon, paid him a visit after finding the remains of Busi. She confronted him in a heated exchange where the serial killer threatened her. Busi's case also has links to Lucy, who initially reported on the butcher of Soweto, which Napoleon was known as at the time. Following the discovery of Busi's corpse, Kariso, a journalist, invited Lucy to his news network to discuss the case where she gave a detailed profile of Napoleon and what makes him a sociopath. The segment started trending, and after seeing it for himself, Napoleon gave Lucy a call, demanding to see her in prison. At first Lucy resisted, but curiosity got the best of her, and she made her way to the prison. The episode ended with Lucy coming face to face with the butcher, Napoleon, in the visiting room. Episode 2 picks up where the first one left off. Lucy finds herself face to face with a serial killer in prison. He offers her his life story in exchange for investigating the disappearance of his brother, Sifiso. Attempted Lucy left the prison, picked up her son from school, and made her way home, where her husband Gary had returned. Gary begged for forgiveness, but upon realizing that Lucy wasn't going to change her mind, he stood his ground and refused to leave, instead forcing Lucy to move out with her son, leaving Gary alone with the house. A vengeful Gary then went on to repossess Lucy's car in the hope that she'll come crawling back to him. Lucy then made a bold move, quitting her job following Patricia's continued stalling on the equity she was owed. Now that she needed cash flow fast, Lucy made the decision to visit Napoleon again. where she agreed to investigate his brother's disappearance in exchange for his story where she agreed to investigate his brother's disappearance which has the potential to be a best seller Lucy made her way to Sfiso's residence where one of the neighbors informed her that Sfiso was recently attacked by intruders who left him shaken and he hadn't been seen since Meanwhile in prison an attempt was made on Dingiswayo's life but he defended himself killing the attacker It is later revealed that the man Dingiswayo killed was a powerful respected gangster in prison, but it appears that someone more powerful on the outside is working behind the scenes to have Napoleon killed in prison. One of the inmates, Goliath, warns Napoleon that there's a target on his back, with word in prison spreading that he was the one who killed the respected gang leader. Dingiswayo then seemingly faked the seizure so he could be isolated from those who might be trying to kill him. 
Back with Lucy, after some encouragement from Gariso, she made her way home and began writing the book. Lucy then received a call from Patricia who apologized for not giving Lucy her share of the company that they agreed upon and suggesting that she had something important to tell Lucy in person. Lucy immediately rushed over to Patricia's office, but it was too late. The episode ends with Lucy discovering her friend's lifeless body covered in blood. Very well written and produced show. It was nice seeing some familiar faces such as the Zulu brothers from The Wife, especially Bongo Koza, who plays the role of Napoleon. I'm very impressed by his performance. He's really showcasing his range. The creators of Shakai Lembe Bomb Productions were tasked with bringing this book adaptation to life, so my expectations were high. The story is based on a novel with the same title written by Angela Makola, who was heavily involved in the writing and development of the show. From the little research I've done, this show is inspired by real events that happened. Angela Makola, much like Lucy, had interactions with one of South Africa's most notorious serial killers, Moses Sitole. I'm not a fan of suspense or thriller, but I'm pleasantly surprised by the quality this show brings. There's six episodes left in season one, and I'm not sure if it covers the whole book, but I think we can expect a season two because the novel has a sequel which has recently been released titled The Reed Dance Stalker. I'll be back next week with another review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is ASR for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling.